mic. Rock. Yeah. It's for art. Yeah, something like that. Yeah. That's how I'll start it. Yeah. I haven't ever put this one on before. Do we look cool now? <laughs> hey guys, it's Justice Curry and He-Man, a.k.a. Brock. How y'all doing today? This was Brock's idea, so... No. <laughs> no, I'm not kidding, I'm kidding. <laughs> Um, we have a great episode today. We're going to be focusing on some grading of some super rare, um, fantastic toy pieces in G.I. Joe and Masters of the Universe. show you the ones that I submitted recently to C CAS, which is based out of Florida. Um, my buddy Chris Whitlock, uh, I hope I said your last name right. Hi Chris. Um, he was local and he was at a, uh, a toy shop called Rocket Comics in Kalamazoo. I drove out there and submitted some to him because it was free shipping if you submit them in person. Yeah. And a lot of yeah. toy shows, like King County Toy Show, yep. they'll have a booth where you can submit your yep. stuff there in person um so without further ado i'll show you some of these things so let's start with the i have four things total three of them are going to be like one of a kind mind-blowing things but this one's special and it's special because it is sentimental i mean heck all you guys watching this why do we collect toys because they're Sentimental. sentimental right we, we a connection rush yes yes and not many more figures than this uh give me that that big high that i chased the dragon for um is the crimson twins or zayma and tomax i distinctly remember opening these on christmas morning back in 1985 so i was just a wee lad and this is one of my core memories and it's so unique because it doesn't look like any other G.I. Joe packaging, as you can see. It was the double figure, first time they offered something like this. Um, I picked up this very nice example. Um, and, I, and I didn't care about condition. But with collecting, we typically upgrade things, oh, right? Absolutely. Especially with mint on card or loose. Absolutely. You get when you first are collecting... You get in. Beggars can't fill be choosers. Hole, fill the hole. Yes, you then... fill the hole. You get whatever. You don't yep, care right. what the condition is. Yep. But then as you continue the journey, whether it's online or a toy store, you come across yep. Yep. a better version. You go, ooh, I'm going to take this better version, upgrade it, yep. and sell the, the, um, the one that's not as nice. So I got extremely lucky with a, a very nice one. Um, this one got an overall grade of 80, which that's, that's fairly high. So it had a card of 80, blister of 85, figure of 90 with a 80 plus. So say it looks really good. Yeah. Um, like I mentioned, there's now Brock, the shameless plug for his company of uh, action figure, or sorry, cases. Like he has a um, a case company called Mock Masters, Mock M O C Masters, and they primarily deal with which toy lines the biggest ones. In yeah, it. we do the Mo Two, Turtles, GI Joe, Star Wars, Marvel Legends, uh, Ghostbusters, Superpowers. I mean, we're getting up there in skews. So, nice. and how could they find you? I'll put a link down below too if you're That's watching just on www.mock dash masters.com okay and they can search in facebook and find absolutely. you as well absolutely perfect yep. 
Um, well, I like to have my high-end or toys on display that are mint on card in these and all mine or majority of all of them in my toy room are Mock Masters. But Mock Masters, this is a very obscure dimension of card. They don't have a blister for this. Most uh, protective case companies don't have blisters for this. My motivation for sending this in to get graded was not to make it more valuable, which it does. Like you turn this figure, which I don't know what it costs, $500 or whatever it is, and you get it graded. And now you go to the next lit niche of collectors, high-end collectors that have decent amount of money that like stuff, yep. high uh, grade collectors. It might turn a $500 figure into a thousand dollars and then you have maybe a hundred dollars invested in this so it's a financial reason some guys do it not me i wanted it because there's no get cases yeah. for it right, right. um so super happy to get this the uh, cas also gives you this archival paperwork with a little seal a um a signature down there and a photograph of your item and it just has a breakdown of when it was submitted it's even you can look this up online if i have this the number oh, that your voice mm -hmm. okay. so people can't be scammed uh especially when we're going to be talking about these one-of-a-kind prototypes it's just another set of provenance uh for that collector speaking of provenance let's go into this no i'm gonna save that one for last there it is oh <laughs> Staying on the, the G.I. Joe train right here, a spirit, also known as Tracker. Now, a mint on card figure, I think he was 90, uh, sorry, 84, 80, 90, 83, but I thought he was 84, whatever. People are going to be like, Justice, you're supposed to be an expert. <laughs> I, know, I know a little <laughs> about a lot of things. I can't keep all these dates memorized. Um, but this one is unpunched, and why I sent it in is because I had a chance to buy uh, many mint on card figures from a, an employee uh, that worked for, um, oh my gosh, Hasbro, I almost said Kenner. Let's edit that part out <laughs> later, oh my gosh. Hasbro, many years ago, um, and since they, the employee gave me paperwork saying these weren't just regular run of the mill ones, these were final engineering pilots of the character and I have the provenance right here um, FEP final engineer pilot would have been sent from the factory once all changes occurred the sample would resemble the final product that would go into production oh. so essentially the last yes like test the test <laughs> before they the mass final produce approval. this the final approval. so he's in that that stage through um, through the employees that get it and go okay this looks good all of them that I got had little um, little peg holes because they were hanging them on pegboards and uh it's just it's a piece of history it feels yeah. cool to have something that um it feels like it should be in the yeah, Smithsonian yeah. It does. <laughs> the G. Joe Smithsonian. that's right that's right I feel like I they used to call uh my my room when I was in high school my museum all my friends would come over because my high school room middle school room was similar to this 360 degrees of miscellaneous knickknacks and it goes oh, justice's museum <laughs> but i i feel kind of like a curator of antiquities because we're getting old yeah, yeah we are turning into yeah, antiquities we're, getting, yeah, we're classics now so um so when i sent that in to be authenticated i sent in the uh certificate of authenticity from the employee as well because they have to go to those extra steps because they can't just take my just word on it. Because yeah. otherwise, everyone would submit things and <laughs> yeah. go, this is a pre-production right. prototype. Right. And and it would flood the market with fakes. Um, and the, on the little sticker itself, it does uh, say final engineering pilot, which designates that it's special. Mm -hmm. You know, it's a pre-production phase of it. Very nice. Yes. Um, next one. I got, I'll save the Mo2 for last. Uh, this one is Armadillo. He was the driver for, I believe, the Rolling Thunder, and I hope to God I'm right on that, um, through G.I. Joe. And as you can see, there's no paint on him. Um, 
Also, on the inner leg would be the year that he was made. That's not on it as well. So this is another prototype that I got from a, um, a designer at G.I. Joe. I commissioned him to do some artwork for me and I was able to get this as well. Um, but it was a first shot prototype. First shot, right. Yep, first shot prototype of Armadillo. And essentially I wanted it just to have a better way to display it. I had them on loose for many years. Um, plus, having provenance. Provenance is the paper trail. If I was to die tomorrow and my wife is going, I don't know what this stuff is, and she's trying to sell it, some of this stuff, granted I have a list of people that I trust to help her along the process, but um, instead of being you know, a $10 piece, this could be a several thousand dollar piece and then, then if I'm not here and my voice is, is no longer on planet Earth, I need to have that little piece of paper inside there for provenance. Um, so they put it on there. They did the backstory. They looked at the paperwork. Um, having this was uh, really neat. Rolling Thunder. Oh, they actually put it on there. Armadillo, Rolling Thunder driver. So that was the only way you could get the, okay. the figure. It wasn't okay. on card. Yep, another thing that the factory makes it, sends it in, um, they check mark it, yep, looks good. Then it would go to phase two, they put it on the card, yep, looks good. So there's a, there's an off, uh, a process sure. that um, Hasbro uses all the way down the line. <laughs> Last but not least, what is this, Brock? Yeah. Mo2. That is, is that the He-Man sword? It is okay. the He-Man sword. Um, if you've watched any of my videos in the past, about a year ago, maybe a little less, I acquired this and did a full video about the, uh, the steps of getting this and I followed it back to the original employee that gave it to a buddy who gave it to another buddy who then got it from me, but I got the paper trail through my YouTube video. I got the screenshots of contacting the employee showing him photographs of what it is. He explained, yes, I, get, I did give it to so-and-so. Yes, this was part of the pre-production process. Um, and again, just having something this close to the history of something yeah. that you guys like, we love, mm -hmm. is is amazing. And I'm very honored because there's there's none other in existence. This is the only one on, on planet Earth. And to have a, a prototype uh, He-Man sword is really neat. Brock mentioned earlier, because we were looking at it right before the video, he's like, there's no hilt on it, but who knows why? I don't know why. Um, and it does, yep, this is the first time I'm even reading the little tag on it. It says He-Man Sword, first shot prototype. And then they uh, they don't do the three grades because there's no card, right. there's no blister. Um, blister. So it's it's graded as a loose figure or loose uh, only, and they, they graded it an 85, which... I could care. They could grade it yeah, at a forty-five. Yeah, I don't right, care. Right. It's what it is. Is what's the important part. Absolutely. Um. So yes, I rarely send things off to get graded, but they're they look great when they're on display. Um. There's a reason for the provenance to have that extra little bit of not just my story. Now a third party sends it uh now third party also does a little bit of research and authenticates it as well um and it just it's fun it's a fun hobby isn't it uh, yeah I, I like the way it displays when mm -hmm. things are graded um i don't have anything graded that i can think of uh but yeah i like the way it displays um but with one of a kind items i think grading is a no-brainer it adds mm -hmm. to the authenticity of the item um even if you, you didn't die tomorrow and just wanted to sell it. You know, it's a hard sell. Yeah. If you just say, yeah, this is a prototype when you could have made it in your basement you know, right. yesterday. Mm -hmm. um, to have it graded and authenticated adds that layer of, like, buyer is more secure, more, you know. Yes, yes. Um, and, and you're exactly right, because I always say my reputation is worth more than money. And now you got my reputation, you got CAS's reputation, right. you know, two people going, hey, this is what it is. And it's not some freaking eBay auction with Joe Nobody going, yeah. hey, this is a prototype. Right. Uh, right. Um, 
Also, they did send full sheets of the same kind of paper that I talked about with the seal, the He-Man sword. They even put a, like a little, what do they call that? Well, uh, that's a notary stamp. Yep, a notary stamp so you can't replicate this. So people cannot just build an acrylic case in their basement, make an exact same replica sticker. These are in the system. Like I can run that serial number i can see it in cas's yeah. system i have the paperwork that goes along with it they make all these different layers to prevent forgeries because there are forgeries oh, yeah. out there i've heard horror stories yeah. of people buying them or mistakenly buying them thinking they got some kind of special thing and then oops yeah not so special now but I, i'm sure you've seen other collection rooms online of people that just collect oh yeah, oh, yeah. Uh, graded stuff like that's all they have a whole wall of mint in box oh, yeah. high end um and and those guys we talk about upgrading figures loose stuff and men on card stuff these guys upgrade graded, graded stuff yeah, they start with the 80s then yeah. they upgrade it to oh, an 85 yeah. then they get a 90 yeah, they and they're want, they're always on the hunt to get this they want the highest grade they can find you yep. they like the minty crispy you know, straight out of the case stuff. Yes, yes. And um, and there's no right or wrong no, way to do, do this. Yeah, that. exactly. You, you do you. you. Uh, um, if that's your thing, yeah. then more power to you. Um, you know, everyone has, there's no right or wrong way to collect. And yeah. everyone's got their, their own way to do it. So, um, this I just got them in the mail today. Brock happened to sh stop over. And you know me, I like to share yeah. our, my excitement. <laughs> with all you and because we're all on this journey together and and thanks again make sure to hit the like button and subscribe if you're watching this on youtube head over to uh, my facebook account and hit that like button also like mock masters on facebook and then you can go to their site oh, and yeah. mention uh justice curry when you do an order and they'll give you 0. 0.0002 percent <laughs> off the total order yeah <laughs> i don't think we have a code for that no <laughs> yet yeah we'll talk with, we'll talk to joe yeah. all right See you guys. Bye. Move it that. Move it that way a little bit. Are you putting stuff on the table here? Um. No. And why you really said? Well, I wanted to put them on first. Can we put them on and take them off? Come on. You're a little silly. <laughs> <laughs> Brock, it's for art. Yeah, something like that. That's how I'll start it. Yeah. Oh, I haven't never put this one on before. First, you may recognize Brock from some uh, older videos. He is my resident uh, Masters of the Universe expert. He'd call you an expert. Right? Uh, I don't know like, if that part. you talk about, he's being humble. <laughs> you talk about any variant. Um, and if you have any questions, I'll, I'll put his phone sure. number down uh, in the comments. Yeah, I'm <laughs> kidding, we're kidding. Facebook. Yeah, Facebook. Uh, <laughs> Brock Snyder on Facebook if you want to hit him up with some, not pricing questions, but variant questions. He'll be more than happy to help you. But uh, like I told you, this is going to be about grading. Now, what would you, how would you describe grading? Like, what is grading? How do I, to explain it? No, like just what, what is it? I mean, you, you submit your figure and this third party grades your figure based on three criteria. Yeah. Um, the card, the blister and the figure, and they give you an all round grade. I'll show you. Of that figure. Yep. And one of the more important factors of it to me, like some guys, it's very important to have a, a high grade. like grades that you got in high school, elementary, A's, B's, C's, 80%, 90%, what have you, those are the grades. But, like he was mentioning, there's three criteria. All those things, everyone collects differently. Like, I don't care about that. I care mainly about the acrylic cases. And granted, you can buy third-party acrylic cases, but with grading, something's unique about them, they're yeah. sealed. Yeah, so you cannot take them out, alter them whatsoever, and there's um, there's some really important things about it. And there's uh, there's various grading companies. I think the two major ones when it comes to toys would be AFA and then CAS. 
and there's some other ones too. And I have buddies that have, are involved in the other ones, and they're going to get butt hurt from not mentioning them. But whatever, I can't please everybody. Like this is a grading. Uh, they put these little. T these aren't the figures that I'm going to show you in a moment because I got some crazy ones. So stay tuned. Uh, I just wanted to we just want to give you a little update on what we're talking about. So as you can see, as everything's backwards, um, there is the AFA did this one. They created it in '85, and then it describes what it is, which it says 2007 Hasbro GI Joe 25th anniversary Snake Eyes with black timber. Timber was his dog. This is a variant. Normally they were the gray wolf timbers. And then there's uh, Rock. Just explain this to me before I hit the record button. But there's three criteria. There's a C, which is the card. the card. And then, like on this one, the C is 85. Then B is blister. the blister. And that would be an 85 as well. And then F is the figure. And since it's mint on card, the figure is more than likely going to be the mm -hmm. highest grade, um, which is a 90. Um, and then they do the overall average and the average would be 85 and then AFA puts a little moniker or extra of NM near mint and then they put a little plus sign so we're not coming here as like grading experts and telling you all the different criterias and blowing your mind with knowledge because some of you watching this know way more about grading than we do we're more toy connoisseurs we enjoy the passion of toys